I'll be showing nine new features in Excel. This includes updates to Excel for Windows and Desktop 365, Excel for the web and iPad. So let's get started. The first new feature is the check performance option in Excel, especially for really large workbooks. And this is a way to optimize the workbook to open it up faster and move around faster. If I go to the review tab, you're gonna see a check performance button. And this has already been in Excel for the web and now it is in Excel for Windows. We'll click this, on the right hand side, workbook performance pane opens up and it says, what do we check for? Access formatting, unneeded metadata, unused styles and other things. So it says I've only used 7,800 cells, but there are 827 to optimize. And I can review by sheet right here. So if I drill in, I can see some feedback on empty cells that might want to optimize. I can scroll down and see there's lots of different sheets in this workbook. And maybe I don't want to explore each of those. So I'm just going to choose this optimize all button. And very quickly it says workbook optimized. Now what's nice is if you've got a really giant spreadsheet, maybe you are a Goldman Sachs banker and you have a megaton spreadsheet. What will happen when you open up a really big one is along the top, there'll be a little information bar and it'll say, Hey, you've got a really complex and large workbook. We think we could optimize this for you. Would you like to check performance and let us optimize it? and it'll automatically open up this pane if you click on that bar to say yes. So you don't have to remember to go to the review tab and click this button. The second new feature is the show detail option for pivot tables in Excel for Windows. I have a pivot table here that's been created and I wanna drill into my Neil Peart signature set. I'm gonna click right there and this brings up the pivot table analyze contextual toolbar menu. We'll click this and there's a new option that says show details. Now hovering, that little tool tip says, show the rows from your original data set that were used to calculate the selected value. So I wanna understand how did this pivot table pull together this Neil Pert signature set where it says there's only two quantity in stock. So I'll click show details and it creates a brand new sheet right here. It says detail one is the sheet name and it pulls out these options right from the original set of data that I had. And so if I want to show that, I'll go to inventory four just to prove that these were the two options. And in inventory four, you're going to see Neil Pert signature set. There is one of those. And there's another one, Neil Pert signature set. So that data is extracted and pulled into this brand new details page. The third new feature is automatically syncing your form results in Excel without having to refresh your data. This has been a long request. I have a form here and there's only two responses so far. It says sync results to Excel for the web automatically and analyze with more detail and flexibility. So I will click open results in Excel. Here we go. It's going to get ready to enjoy my data in Excel. Here are the two survey results that have been filled out so far. And note that Excel says syncing. This workbook syncs automatically with changes in forms. And this is in preview. So let's just see if another result pops in. Look at that, a new result just appeared. I didn't have to update anything or sync it. So what's really handy is you can have these results up and as the new results are coming in, it'll automatically keep this Excel file auto in sync. The fourth new feature is export to CSV in Excel for the web. This has existed a long time in Excel for Windows. Now I can go to the file menu, choose export, and there are three options. There's this new one that is download as CSV, comma separated values. Just click this. And in the upper right, you're going to see there is my new inventory CSV file that I've downloaded. I can go open that up. I can do other things with it. The fifth new feature are nice improvements to dragging and dropping in Excel for the web. So I'll select a column right here. And now there's these little six dots. And if I hover, my hand grippy shows up. I click and I can drag, take that anywhere I want. Same thing, hover, drag it back. Same thing with the row. So I go here, I can hover, I can drag that row down, let it go like that. Hover, drag that right back. And notice it says hold shift to replace. So that's another option. If you hold the shift key down while you're dragging, you can replace the thing where you're dropping it. So in this case, I'll hold shift and drag. We're going to replace that electric guitar. Let go. There's already data here. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. There we go. The sixth new feature is a set of autofill improvements in Excel for the web. These have existed in Windows, now it's coming to the web. I've got a little cell here, $100. I'm gonna hover over this square and it turns into that plus. If I click the left mouse button and drag down and let go, it just copied all the cells. Now maybe I wanna fill those as a series. So this is the new option, this little on object UI as it's called. 
If I go and drop that down, I have the option to copy cells. I can choose to fill series. So let's choose that one. Notice that now it increments. I've filled that series. This stays up. I can still click it and choose different options. I'm going to choose flash fill on a different sheet to show what this one looks like. So I'm going to go to sheet number one and I've got a set of names here and I want to just extract the first name of each of these little sets of cells. So I'll type in Edward and what I'm going to do here is select the cell, hover for the plus and drag down. Now I didn't want to copy Edward all those times. I wanted to use flash fill. So I can just click the little drop down here, choose flash fill and it is smart and it extracts all the first names into that cell. The seventh new feature is pasting improvements in Excel for the web. So I've got a table right here. I'm going to select a bunch of these different colored cells and I will choose control C to copy. Now I'll select over here and I will do control V to paste. Now when I paste the little hovering UI comes up and I can choose and there's all these different options, values only, formulas only, formatting, link to source. I just want to choose values only. I don't want all those colors. So now just paste it as a set of values. I can still go back and choose, oh, maybe I didn't want that one. Maybe I wanted to have a different one like formatting only. There's just the formatting. And similarly in the upper left, I've got that same paste set of options right here. And then lastly, if I right click on any cell, I can also choose to paste those values. So if I right click here and I use paste special, I have those same options. So you've got a few different ways in Excel for the web to have pasting options. The eighth new feature lets me send a direct link to a sheet in Excel for the web. So when they open up a big workbook, instead of always landing on the first sheet, you can navigate them directly to the sheet that you care about. So I've got a really long set of sheets in this workbook and I want to send a link directly to go to inventory number three. If I right click, I can choose copy link to the sheet. It pulls up this right here. It's copied it now to my clipboard. I can change the settings. So there's lots of different options on who the link works for and who can edit it or if it's read only other things like that. We'll just hit the back button and I've got this on the clipboard. So now I'm going to open up a new tab in Excel and just show what it looks like when it links directly to that sheet. So I'll go hit the plus and I'll paste and we're going to pull this up and look at that. It goes to inventory three sheet right here. I didn't have to go navigate and find it. The ninth new feature is pivot table support in Excel for iPad. So table here, go to the insert and tap pivot table on the toolbar. It opens up a pivot table pane on the right. And I can choose to insert on a new sheet, choose my own destination, but I'll go to insert new sheet and tap insert. And there's your good old pivot table UI. And I've got my fields down at the bottom. I can go and look at the different options there. In the upper right, I'm going to tap on AZ arrow and I'm going to change the sort order. Alpha sort, go back to source order. Now I'm going to tap on one of the items. So let's tap on item. And on the left, it appears in my table. Add quantity and stock. And I'm going to add another one. Let's say in this case, I go inventory value. Now I tap and drag that down and drop it onto columns, just like you can do in the normal pivot tables. You can see it added columns there. Might want to go add unit price. We'll put that one down under rows, drop it there and it adds that into it. And if I go on the left and tap in my pivot table, I can do things like sort, descending, ascending. Now over on the right, I can go and I can choose one of the little three dot menus. So here I've got lots of different options, move to columns, move to values, uh, remove the field. So I remove something there. Maybe I want to go and I want to remove a different one, go to columns, tap on the three dot menu and I can choose there to remove the column. So you have lots of different options here. I encourage you to play around with pivot tables and Excel iPad. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.